I, I wouldn't mind being in Australia right now because um, it's yeah. kind of a shitty weather right now in Sweden, yeah. raining and cold. <laughs> yeah, I want to say yeah. I want to say thanks for Hammer for for coming back on Blood, Sweat and Metal. This is about the fourth time I had you guys on because previously to this current interview, I was talking to Oscar and also the other guitarist. Before you came to Australia for the very first time last year, it was about 12 months to the day that you guys came to Australia for a one-off gig. <clears throat> I just want to ask, you, you guys must have been thrilled playing that gig in Melbourne last year as well. <clears throat> yeah, we had a great time. I mean, it was a kind of a small gig for us, but uh, it was... I mean, it was the first time for Hammerfall in Australia, so it was really nice. Mm. Uh, and we were on on this uh, kind of Asian tour with playing Japan and and Hong Kong and uh, Taiwan at the same time. So mm. we figured it would be nice to to take a trip down to Australia, even though it's not a small trip. It's uh, <laughs> it's quite some distance, uh, but uh, I mean, we had a blast, and it was really great being there. Yeah, it was. I've seen some of the video footage from that um, concert as well. You guys did put in a great performance, like always. There's no doubt in my mind that you guys cannot perform because you guys can. I've been watching you guys um, doing Barkin and some other festivals on live stream in the past. Now coming to Australia and seeing you guys live for the very first time because it costs a lot of money to go overseas nowadays. It was a real, it was a real kick, and I, I really love it. I really do. Yeah, for us it doesn't matter if it's a small crowd or if it's a really, really big festival stage, because we always want to give the yeah. fans uh, something extra. So we, we always try to to do our best and and uh, and, and give a great performance. Because mm. it doesn't matter if there's hundred people paying or or uh, ten thousand. You have to. Do, do it for the fans who's there. Exactly. Before I go into the new album that's going to be released next week called Built for Last, I want to go back the album before that to Revolution. There was a couple mm-hmm. of things going on with Hammer 4. You had the drummer leave the band after the album got released and a new drummer came in. But you, Frederick, became a father. I want to ask, yeah. how's that going for you and has the fatherhood made you a better person today? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I got two kids right now. Uh, I got one uh, four-year-old and one who's soon to be two-year. So, uh, yeah, it definitely uh, was a big change for me and my life. So I, I definitely think, think I'm, I'm a better person today. Yeah. Uh, you, you get a different uh, aspect in life uh, on what's important. Hmm. And like I said before, the drummer previously left after the album Revolution was released due to he'd been in the music business for so long and a new drummer came in. But I say that, Hammer 4 had had some lineup changes over its career and that um, due to whatever reason they shall be. But with Built for Last coming out next week, do you think this lineup now is as strong as always with the other members being in the band as well yeah i mean it's it's hard to say what what one person uh, no. decides to do uh, but uh, right now it feels great i mean we have a we have a new drummer and uh, he really kicked some 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 yeah. energy in the band again um, when anders left we we thought it would be really hard to replace him because uh, he was such a big character Mm. Uh, in Hammerfall uh, and a great drummer uh, but it seems like um, David really took that and and, uh, and he gave us a lot of energy yeah. it was it was great being in the studio with him it was for the first time for all of us in the studio but he, he's been playing the drums for for uh, the Revolution tour um, so so we know him pretty well now mm. and but it felt uh, natural yeah I mean, to say what the legacy is of Hammerford, no matter who's in the band, you all play a part. And 
I think Built for Last is the next chapter for that. It's the new storyline of what Hammer 4 is all about. I mean, with the song like Hammer High that was released as a video clip, and then you had the the lyric video clip that was released on YouTube as well called uh, Sacred Vow. The message, the message from those two songs, it's the same as if you go back in history of Hammer 4, like um, Last Man Standing or Hearts on Fire, because there are some elements from Built for Last from those other albums, but you made Built for Last the next chapter of the new modern era of Hammer 4. Yeah, as the title says, Built to Last, it, uh, it's kind of a statement that... Um when we released the first record in 97, uh, Glory to the Brave, uh, nobody thought that we would ever do another record. Uh, and, and now we've been around for almost 20 years, and, uh, and this is our 10th studio album. So, I mean, we're really built to last. We're, we're here to stay. Uh, that's, that's the statement. And at the same time, I mean, we, we tried to... Uh, even at uh, the Revolution album, we try to look back and take the, the what's good with Hammerfall, the, the good old Hammerfall, and uh, try to make it fresh and new in, in a way, but uh, but still uh, relying on 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 our grounds, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah, because what I what I say with Hammerfall is it doesn't matter what what you play you can put a flow song in there or a ballad i should say and you can really ramp it up and go the full pedal to the metal speed metal you know you guys you guys got all those different elements and it's just such a wonderful feel that you can produce that type of music to the wider audience around the world and we saw i mentioned at the top of the interview we we saw it for our for the first time last year in Australia, that you guys are so well knit together. You you all fed off one another. You know whose weaknesses and strengths are within the band, but you feed off that. You don't create what some other bands will, an argument, so to speak. You guys just go out there, play for the audience, and you keep producing greater albums as they come along. Like... Back in 97, like you said, no one thought you guys would last after that, but you look in hindsight now, almost 20 years later, you guys are riding the wave. Yeah. I mean, we... For, for the, the slow songs and for the fast songs, uh, I think it's it's uh, important to, to keep the diversity on a record. Uh, it's, it's kind of boring when you hear... A whole album like 10 or 11 12 songs that's all fast songs you get uh, you get a little tired of that you need some some uh, uh, what do you call it some uh, some highs and lows uh, so uh, we, we try to, to to do a good mix for a record uh, nowadays a lot of people just create albums for for uh, for the songs they they, uh, they make one song and that has to be uh, the same recipe for the next song. We we try to still to try to make an album that's that's uh, uh, I don't know. It might be unusual these days to to, to look at the the whole album thing, but uh, that's how we do it. Yeah. Let's go to the album, shall we? We built for last. You got Hammer High. My partner's been dancing around in the lounge room every time we play that song here because I've. <laughs> I, re- I received the promo recently, but um, the, the drums at the start of that, that is a real testimony and statement for you guys because it's preparing for battle. And for what I see during the video clip, it's, it's like a Roman Empire being attacked by another Spartan and the, the two worlds colliding together. Can you just can you just elaborate on the story of Hammer High because my partner loves that song. She really does. Uh, I think the, the the video is about um, um, it's the director's way of of of, uh, of Hector's birth, so to speak. 
um, our mascot uh, and how he how he uh, he became Hector at that time. Uh, Hammer High is uh, for us just a hymn to to stand tall and and fight for what what you believe in uh, and just keep your hammer high while doing it hmm. and it will be fine. <laughs> yeah. And like I say, um, you know, this could have been a song of another album too, but thank goodness it's on this one because my, my personal intake, I don't think it would have been fitted for another album, Hammer High, because that was a different chapter. This is the the rise of the, the new wave, basically, after Revolution, and Hammer High basically... It's a testimony statement. Like you put your fist in the air, hammer high, and be like. I know Oscar is a very. Um, he's a gamer as well. I think he will. I think he will like like the War of Warcraft or something like those type of games where you can pick the hammer up and charge at someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, he's a big gamer. I I know he's a big Zelda fan and. And he uh, he plays a lot of, of games these days, yeah. uh, but at the same time he reads a lot of uh, books as well, uh, a lot of uh, yeah. f- fiction and uh, Game of Thrones yeah. kind of. So where did the idea of built for life originated from? Was it during the tour for Revolution or just after the the tour? Um, I think. I mean, it's mostly Oscar and uh, and Joachim who writes the yeah. songs, and um, they they sat down just after the tour, I think, uh, and and uh, try to do some structure for it. And um, I know Oscar has he had a, a hard time um, to to um, get something out of it. He had to refill with new music. He needs to listen to a lot of music to to get inspiration uh, and uh, and then he had to like like a, uh, a book like a writer uh, he had to sit down for a couple of hours every day and, and try to get something out and all of a sudden it just popped out uh, and uh, I know this record took some time for him to 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 do but uh, when we heard the, the first raw demos uh, it felt like it's always hard to, to to tell what a song's gonna be when you just hear a, a raw demo, but uh, it felt good uh, at the at the beginning because uh, there were some fast songs and some slow songs. And it was it was a good pace throughout the whole album, and um, yeah, I could tell from the beginning that uh, this this had some really good songs in it. Yeah, <clears throat> because as I mentioned before, you guys. You know each other well, and you you feed off your talent with one another. Like I mentioned, also, you know the weaknesses and the strengths of each member, and that's what makes Home of so great. And I mean, you guys just keep getting better and better and better as each album goes along. And there'll be some people out there that will disagree with me, and I don't really care because I'm a, I'm a fan of music and I voice my opinion. But when you look at it, hindsight, like you mentioned before, um, some bands out there just want a one-hit single and that's it. And then don't build the album around of a story or a collaboration of stories. They just want to get their one main hit on that single and that's it. But with Hammer 4, yeah. but with Hammer 4 you guys collaborate stories throughout the entire... Um, albums that you created in your catalogue, whether there'll be just one story from top to bottom of the album, or there'll be a collaboration of stories that means the same type of diaphragm. Do you see yeah. other... I don't want to... I want your opinion I'm, I'm, as a fan, um, like a music fan, not a, not a question directly to Hammer for, but you being a fan of music yourself, have you seen other bands do that as well? Like They've been told that they need this many number of hit singles on the album rather than taking the balls in their own hands and just create 
a, a collaboration of of songs, and hopefully they pull off. Uh, I don't think I can take an example, but I know a lot of records. I mean, I'm, I'm a music fa- fan myself. I listen a lot to music, so yeah. And I I prefer to to listen to uh, a whole album, uh, even even though I don't have the time at the moment to listen to a whole album maybe but uh, I listen to it maybe half an album and then I listen to the other half uh, later on so I, I prefer to, to look at as as a whole um, then of course you have Spotify you can browse song by song but I usually when I, I decide to, to listen to music I try to put on mm. the whole album yeah uh, because that's how I listened to music when I was a kid. I mean, yeah. you sat down by the LP and, and read the lyrics and, and watched the cover and, and listened to the whole fucking album. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's the thing with me. I can't not listen to just one single or two singles. For me, I've got to listen to the whole entire album. And that, that's been me since I was born. I remember the very first album my parents put on to keep me asleep was... Barry Manilow. You fast forward that 37 years later, and I'm listening to you guys, Iron Maiden, um, Kiss, Manowar, all those type of bands over the years. And it's like major, major shape shift from listening to Barry Manilow to listen to the heavy rock type of things. And like I said, I can't just stop at one or two or three songs. I've got to listen to the whole entire album. To get me the yeah, feel. That's, yeah, that makes a, a lot of songs stand out. If you just listen to one song, it might, might be a slow song, and, and it feels maybe it feels slow. But uh, but if you listen to the to it in, in the context of an album, yeah. it might be the the break of the whole album to, to let it breathe and 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 to move on. And uh, that's that's a good thing with an album. You you need all of those elements. Exactly. Exactly, because many questions I've been asked from fans um, listen to a lot of albums. What's your favourite song off this album? I can't give them a straight answer. Every <laughs> every time I listen to an album, it's a different answer. I'll just say all of them. I'll just say all of them. Um, but when it comes to Hammerfall, on the other instance, uh, I, I've got my favourites, and then I've got my favourite favourites. So they're all favourites. I mean... I mean, yes, people, people will know, um, you know, the the master hit "Hearts on Fire." Yes, that's one of my favourites, and like "Won't Back Down," and also "Last Man Standing." But all of them, in fact, and, and matter of fact, the cover versions of Detroit Rock City from one of my classic favourite bands, Kiss. You guys released that as well. That's a favourite. So, <laughs> I, but saying that. Before we go back into Built for Last, I know we've got about five to ten minutes left of the interview. So, about, yeah. talking about covers, um, songs and that, you've done that cover albums early on in the year of the career of Hammer 4. Would you ever consider doing that again? Uh, that cover album was actually a, a way of, of putting all our covers together to, to make it uh, accessible for uh, for fans mm. who didn't want to buy all of those special editions, limited versions of the albums. Um, so uh, we put all of them together on one record just for just for give, them, give fans something. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, I can't say we're never going to do a cover again because uh, originally we, we did cover songs from from more obscure bands that we wanted to show the world, yeah. uh, some small metal bands or whatever, and, and tried to, to make covers from them and, and show them where we were, what we were listening to. Yeah. Um, and then it became all kind of different songs that we made cover of. Yeah. Uh, but right now, it doesn't feel like we're going to do covers more. No. <laughs> Never say never. I yeah, mean, exactly. We could do something for fun. I don't know. Yeah. You never know. 
So the album's getting released next week, Built for Last, and it's a great album. I, I advise the fans who listen to this show, go and grab it. It'll be out in all your independent and major record labels chains here in Australia. And also, if you want some bonuses, go on Nuclear, um, not Nuclear Blast, because that was the old record label, but it's Napalm Records now. You can get some yes. bundle pack from Built for Last as well. And there's also a limited edition statue that you can purchase as well from the website. And if you want Hector, you go and get him. Um, but I also want to say, um, Frederick, um, what are the plans for Hammerfly? Are you, those massive festivals coming up in your summer, which will be our winter. But is there any other plans going around doing small arena gigs like you did with Revolution? Um, we have a lot of plans. We have a lot of touring to do. Uh, our uh, our first uh, tour starts in mid January. Uh, we're gonna do a big European tour, and then we're gonna do a big US tour. You guys going back? You guys going back to Wacken next year, I believe. Are you? Uh, don't have it confirmed. I don't yeah. know yet. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of festivals going uh, going on that we we haven't confirmed yet, and yeah. uh, I'm not sure what's what's on, on the table right now mm-hmm. but uh, and we're gonna do a, a South American tour as well so there's a lot of touring just the first uh, the first six months mm-hmm. and uh, and then we haven't decided yet on, on yeah. the fall of next year yeah but uh, I'm sure we're gonna do a lot of shows and hopefully you can come back to Australia it'll be a bit bigger next time when you come down <laughs> oh that would be awesome yeah really but one last question about Australia. Um, rumours were circulating, and I'm, I'm guilty for this because I was the one that went with it. I went to the guy that used to run the biggest Australian metal festival called Soundwave. And I put, after I spoke to Oscar, I went straight to the promoter on Twitter and put your guy through. And it was on the maybe list. Were you guys ever contacted back from the promoter called AJ from Soundwave before you made the, the trip to Australia? Was there any type of conversation between the promoter and the band of you guys coming to Australia for that festival? Uh, actually, I'm not sure about it. Because um, usually, as long as nothing is confirmed, there's a... Uh... I mean, there's a lot of talk between the agencies, and, and uh, yeah. uh, it's a it's a bit above my head because uh, I I don't get noticed mm. about everything that might yeah. happen. That would be too much for me. So yeah. um, uh, I mean, we talked about Soundwave, but um, I, I'm not sure if we if we uh, if we got uh, ever got contacted or not. Mm. Oh, well, like I said, I, I I'm only guilty for going up to the promoter asking to get you guys to Soundwave after I spoke to Oscar for Revolution album. And yeah. whatever happened after that, as you know, there's no more Soundwave. Soundwave has collapsed and folded due to mismanagement and whatnot. But, um, oh, fuck, I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. And that was a huge thing, right? Yeah. It, that happened last year, last December, November, December last year, that fell down. That festival's no longer... We are hearing... Oh. We are hearing rumours that download might be coming to Australia. We don't know yet. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they're expanding. They're already expanded to France this year, so we think they might come to Australia maybe in a couple of years' time. So we just hope that we get another festival of that magnitude back to Australia because we don't have any festivals here in Australia no more. Hmm. I really hope so. Yeah. It would be great to be on, on one of those festivals yeah. touring around Australia. Yeah. That's for sure. So all the people out there um, know I was not spreading the rumours. I went straight to AJ on Twitter, spoke to, to him directly to get Hammer 4 here for Soundwave. Whether they whether he spoke to the band or not, I don't know. And Frederick just said he doesn't know, so we don't know. But they did come to Australia last year, so if you missed out, Hopefully they'll come back again, and hopefully we don't have to wait too long this time. <laughs> and that's all I've got to say to the fans. <laughs> I hope but, so. But, um, Frederick, it's all the time we got for, but I cannot wait to get the physical copy next week. 
of Built for Life and also to speak more to you guys leading up to another Australian tour or any other project that you guys may have. Thank you very much for having me. No, it's, it's a pleasure. It was a pleasure and, and, um, and I really, really hope that we get to Australia real soon. So, um, can't promise anything right now, but uh, it would be nice. Yeah. All right, Frederick, take care and look after your family as well. Take And give our love to them as well. Uh, same. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.